All right. Well, today we are going to um, do a little overview on a laser printer. And you probably have one of these in your office. And these guys are good for printing black black and white documents um, at a much faster rate than your inkjet, ink-based counterparts. And uh, here we go. This particular brother is an NEC Superscript 870. And it's about 10 years old. But um, still works okay. So here we go. Um, typically, you want to open it accordingly, according to the instructions, and uh, you can get to the inside where the toner and the drum, if they're separate or all in one unit, as um, in models like HP and some other um, manufacturers would have it. Um, have set up, but in this particular case, they are separate units. And let me show you. First, we take out the toner unit. This is the toner cartridge. As you can see, it doesn't have a drum. Let's see here. What it does is, it basically is a toner container, and it has this this black roller is really um, what we call that H, some kind of a transfer roller. It's um, sort of like a rubber. Um, uh, made of rubber or um, some kind of synthetic material, but basically all it does is it picks up the toner and spreads it evenly onto the roller so that it, it will transfer to the drum as the next step. And here is the drum. And let's take it out here. As you can see, the drum has the, the this is the green thing. A lot of times they're green or um, possibly even um, a shiny brown, reddish brown. But Basically, it's also called a photoconductor, and sometimes they're called the OPC unit. Um, optical photoconductor um, is what OPC is short for. But basically, how it, it would actually work is um, as the paper comes through from the paper feeding section, it comes through to the inside, and um, before anything happens, what happens is the um, the computer have already sent the print command, right? When you when you hit the print, and um, what that does is it sends a message, a uh, data, to the printer, and which in turn will be translated onto um, this drum, photoconductor. And what the laser would do is it would write those um, images in the characters or text onto the drum in a in a uh, you know what do you call it? Uh, a negative charge, I believe. A negative charge onto the drum, so that the it would be ready to attract the particles on the toner. So, right before the paper contacts this area, the um, the black roller on the toner unit I showed you earlier has already been coated. It's been turning and it starts to coat itself with an even an even coat of toner, as you can see right here. Okay. And as that roller contacts the drum, it will the, notice that the drum is already charged. It's pre-charged with um, the areas that need, need to be printed and the areas that needs to stay blank. And when this contacts the drum, what you get is the correct images or text that you had um, wanted when you hit print to be written onto the drum. Okay. And um, you could actually see the images on the drum if you were to actually pull out everything and stop it during the middle of a print print job, which I don't recommend. But so what happens is, um, while that's going on, as soon as the image is written onto the drum and the paper would go through, and it would be precisely timed in such that the image would be transferred as the paper is coming through, it would be transferred onto this image would be transferred onto the paper. Okay. So, and as it keeps going for the rest of the page, um, the beginning of the paper is going to keep going, and it's going to come through this unit, which is called the fuser unit. And what it does is that this is an extremely hot unit when it, when it is um, functioning. And you want to make sure you don't touch that. See, it says uh, caution, hot, and all that good stuff. So what it does is that as the paper comes through with the toner particles on, on it, this would seal it onto the paper. It would fuse it onto the paper through high temperature so that um, 
your the toner could become actually um, you know part of the paper and it wouldn't rub off. That's the idea of diffuser. And as it comes out, it would come out this way through the uh, paper exit section. Okay, and uh, you may have noticed that. Um, Whenever there's a paper jam you've experienced in the past and um, you pull out the paper by opening um, the cover and pulling out the paper, you'll notice that a lot of times um, part of the text, the, the toner, would be loose. And that is because the document hasn't gone through the fuser yet. Um, it hasn't been fused or sealed. So that's why you would see loose particles. Okay, so. That's, uh, that document will be no good. You probably want to toss it anyway. So, well, there you have it. This is uh, the basics of a toner-based machine, a laser printer. And, uh, and a note on the toner and the drum module. And um, certain manufacturers have set it up in such a way that the drum is a separate unit and the toner is a separate unit. And what would happen is um, the drum would last let's say approximately 20,000 pages um, per the manufacturer and the toner will last say about 3,000 to 5,000 pages depending on the capacity mod model you um, purchase. What this would do is um, uh, you don't have to spend as much money on the toner off the bat which means that um, for the first um, let's say four units of toner you wouldn't have to change a drum and these guys would probably cost less than um, in other manufacturers models where um, the toner and the drum is com combined as one unit which you, you would have to change every single time and well that's the advantage of this kind of a model the separate units but keep in mind that once you get to the let's say the fifth unit or whenever the drum goes out uh, the drum would probably cost you uh, over a hundred dollars um, some of the models like brother uh, most drums are between 120 to 160 dollars, and sometimes even higher. And but the thing is, you don't have to replace it every time. These are long-lasting, uh, long-life drums that will last probably four or five cycles of high-capacity toners. And on a model like an HP or uh, most of the Samsungs, um, the toner and the drum is actually built into one unit. So imagine all the mechanisms of this is built into the same unit it's not able to be separated and in this case the drum is made to last only one cycle for the most part and um, you would just toss it out or uh, actually I shouldn't say toss it out but you would recycle it when the whole thing is gone when the toner is out and you would just buy another toner cartridge which includes a drum inside and typically the setup would cost a little bit more than these units which were where you're just buying the toner but the good thing is that in that case you wouldn't have to replace the expensive hundred fifty dollar drum you know every four or five cycles you would just every time you change your toner you're you're getting a new um you know like a short life drum with it and you just don't have to worry about extra expenses that hit you every five times so it sort of averages out so yeah and um, overall I would say the cost per print is about the same. And um, and with the high prices of printing supplies, especially what the original manufacturer charges, it's a good idea to um, to try compatible units or um, remanufacture units. And um, one of the best, uh, that, that is one of the best ways to save money. So um, you are interested in saving money on your printing supplies, please check out our website, tonerall.com, and uh, it's it's going to be shown on the screen here. And um, check it out; you can save a lot of money. Most of the times, uh, the prices would be at least 50% off, 50% cheaper than the original brand. Okay, and that's it for today. Thank you.